actually watch my um, videos that I put up on YouTube that I gave uh, one lecture that involved a professional and an amateur player where the amateur player was invading all over the place, giving his opponent a lot of influence, tried to reduce it, and was just acting all around crazy. Uh, and that was between a amateur 7-don and a professional. So if it's occurring at the 7-don level, it's probably occurring everywhere. And in this first game that I use, we're definitely seeing that crazy moves do actually appear everywhere, even in Q games. This one, for example, is very much similar to that other lecture that I just mentioned, where we have a uh, 3Q in this case, going to try to invade, and yes, you are having deja vu, where uh, the Q is trying to invade everywhere, like I uh, mentioned in the previous one, and we're going to see how that turns out. Unfortunately, Black is not a professional player, so he doesn't have as good a time handling it, but we'll see how that goes. And for those of you just joining, this is a uh, pretty much the same lecture I gave on Wednesday, only this time I'm recording it in better quality. So, pretty straightforward, White is trying to invade immediately idea here being he's going to give black a wall and then try to reduce the wall immediately. Not n not that great of a uh, strategy in my opinion. I do like that black did not try and do anything crazy here. He just accepted the wall that black was going to give him, or that white was giving him, sorry. Only now we have a dilemma on our hands. We have Sente. So how are we going to continue the game from here? How do we answer White's craziness? Unfortunately, Black does it by trying to extend from his wall, making it a little bit over-concentrated, because we've got a fairly large amount of uh, influence here from this wall, and trying to use that and turn it into a very limited amount of territory here is not a very good use of this wall. Better uses of this wall would have been to keep in mind, you know, how are we supposed to use influence? Generally, if at all preferable, we'd like to attack with influence. So, um, even a pincer here would have been a bit better. Push him towards your wall, maybe. Though, better than that, I would rather have seen uh, Black just take almost any of the open corners. That definitely would have been larger. It would have been calmly uh, reasoning that board's still open, corners are available, group's not in trouble. I'm going to take myself in my uh, a corner. White right now has absolutely nothing. There's no reason not to. White's got this corner right now. Uh, Comey. I met, well, no, probably not Comey since the rank difference. So, not even that. Just the corner. No reason to uh, respond locally. We can just go take some points for ourselves. Unfortunately, Black does respond. And this becomes a very, very important point when dealing with crazy moves. Because one thing that we don't want to get involved in is constantly responding to our opponent or playing slow moves. If we do that, usually it's bad to do that uh, in a normal game, just following your opponent around the board or playing slowly. But when you're dealing with people who are blatantly overplaying or playing, again, what I uh, refer to as crazy moves, that's what they want you to do because then they can get away with it. So here White's happy. Black over concentrated himself. He gets to take a corner. So now we kind of get the feeling that Black is now behind. Again, Black responds to exactly what White was doing. Same as before, would have been better to take a corner, because if he wants to enclose this, that's fine. 
White would have the upper and lower right-hand corners. Not much else, though. And even though this was a bit of a bad move, it does have follow-ups in this particular instance. We could invade this now because we've already uh, approached this extension. This will be very, very easy to handle. So, wouldn't be that bad of a result. Instead, Black responds to his opponent again. White pincers, bit unusual. I would uh, more commonly see an attempt to develop uh, with that extension than just pincering here, but okay. White is greedy, he doesn't want his opponent to get anything, and that's what we're seeing reflected in these moves. Black tried to get a corner, boom, we're going to invade that. Black's approach, or Black's now approaching, again, pincer, we don't want him to develop there either. So White's just being really, really greedy. Black jumps out. White kicks. Uh, not Jaseki, but I can see what he's attempting to do here. He wants to cut off that one stone. Not bad. Simply playing down. Or attaching would be easier if he had one of those two options in mind. White obviously connects, because he gets to connect under, or, well, either side, really. Black, white chooses to connect underneath. And, again, Black continues to respond. Um, Would have been better if he, uh, again, stopped following his opponent, and kept in mind with what he was wanting to do. He was wanting to separate uh, R10. He has Sente to do that, so he could even put pressure on this stone again. Make certain that it's never, ever, ever going to get a base. And that would have been better. Instead, he's responding a little bit locally. But, at the very least, he doesn't play the Hane and continue out this variation. That would have been really, really bad. Because now White has Sente, and if White wanted to, he would have been able to go back and peep. Or even take a two-space extension. But alright, he returns to a good move. Unfortunately, there is some shape problem here since he did respond, and that's unfortunate. But he got the good move in. Uh, important point here is that white, despite giving the influence to black and trying to uh, deny anything to black, really, He's got a weak group. White has a weak group. Black has a lot of influence. So he still has a lot of potential in this game. Makes him heavy. Sure, why not? Strengthens his stones. Alright. Alright, fine. Makes certain that uh, moves like this aren't going to be seen to escape and get shape. I can see the reasoning there. Okay. Not bad, not bad. But again, we see that exact same uh, greedy play. White, again, does not want black to have anything. And he's going to try and get rid of all of it the minute he sees it. I'm certain that you've all played a game like this. I hope you weren't white in the situation, but you've probably played against this at some point in your Go playing career. And how to handle it is really difficult, because it's really easy to see a large space on the board and just slap a stone down there. But how to handle it, that requires, like, thought. So, when you see things like this, a couple of good thoughts to have. Uh, one, how can I make myself stronger? In this case, we can take a look at the corner and see that it's not fine just yet. We can still pressure it, make ourselves stronger, threaten to uh, kill the top. White's probably going to respond to it since 
we can see here that white would be in a lot of trouble if he ignores. So this is a move that's probably going to be Sente. And then we can just go on and kill it. Now we could have killed it immediately with just a surround. But that kind of offers the chance for white to make, to make this into a bit of a good move. Because he can over-concentrate you here again. And suddenly he's sort of the one that's actually happier here. He got to enlarge his corner. Um, he's forcing you to play a bunch of moves just to kill off that one stone. I like this move first a lot better. I mean, even if you're not going to play that, but going to play something like this, I still like it a lot more. Because what's white actually going to do? Is he going to cut you? Well, he can't disconnect you. So, where are those stones going to go? Instead, black connects immediately. Which allows white the ability to maybe try and sacrifice that stone. This would actually be a fairly reasonable use of uh, the peep. Getting an opportunity to make, let's say, a smy shape here. That'd be understandable. That would be reasonable, even. Unfortunately, he does not want to do that. Like I mentioned, he's greedy. And like any good greedy player, he's going to try and save everything. And ruin everything. But still, this is okay. Even now, this is fine. For black, anyway. Because now he's got two weak groups to go after on the board. Could have been a little bit easier for him. In the other variation, but okay. Now he's got this one. He separates the two groups. That's very fundamental. Always important to remember. Separate the two weak groups. Good idea. White is, of course, trying to disconnect. That, uh, probably a bad idea. Would, might be a little bit better if he had separated the black groups. Because now, black's in a lot of trouble. That 017 group needs to do something, or it's going to die. And the answer to that isn't going to be to cut here and hope for the best. It's not to run out and try and make a base and whatnot. Instead, white defends and allows black to connect up. So that's good. That's good. For black, anyway. If the other variation had been played, he'd have been completely tricked, and this game gets a little bit more difficult. But alright, uh, black is to connect. So white still has two weak groups. So the question again is again, how are we going to handle this? Now, the next couple of moves are a little bit unusual. I'm going to kind of go through them real fast because I'm not interested in the sequence very much. I'm interested in the result of this sequence. Uh, white can't disconnect black, finds that out. Probes a bit. Unfortunately, as you can see here, um, white does get to connect because black didn't read that he was fine. But whatever, I don't care. The, the result that he gets is, is still going to be, I don't know, reasonable enough for my purposes. So yeah, can't disconnect, otherwise we're going to be in trouble. And black actually manages to disconnect the white stones. Here we go. So unfortunately, in this sequence, white uh, manages to kill a few black stones. I I'm not really interested in that. What I am interested in is all of this influence that black has, as well as a weak group to still go after. Because black managed to get all of this, I still think it's an okay game for black. 
he has been tricked a few times. He's lost a few stones. Missed a few, um... Missed a few things. But overall, still a reasonable board that I expect Black to win from. Now, he has Sente here. A lot of influence and Sente. And two open corners. So from here, I would expect to see either one of two things. Either an attack on the top group, or just a more calm solution and taking a corner for himself. Instead, he plays slowly. And remember, one of the two things I mentioned that you want to be careful when your opponent's uh, playing crazy and getting away with seemingly everything, you want to be aware of those small moves as well as responding to them all over the board. Black is very afraid of white. So he plays a small move, defensive, doesn't need it. I mean, this group here is in absolutely no danger from a group that only has two liberties. This little cutting stone here. Uh, as well as, you know, he's got ways to make eyes still. Uh, he's, there's no stones around, I mean, if the board was looking something like this for maybe white stones, I could see, okay, he's completely surrounded, definitely needs to make defensive moves. But with everything still so open, yeah, definitely does not need those slow moves. But alright, he plays slow. White sees the influence, immediately says, I'm getting rid of all of that. I got rid of your territory, I tried to get rid of your influence, I even killed a few stones in the process of doing so. You have influence again, I'm going to get rid of it. Very greedy player. Makes something in the middle for himself. Black peeps the two stones. Uh, nothing really there for him. I would still rather see attempts to take the center, or not the center, the corner. Maybe attack the top group, take the open corner. Any of these I still like more than, again, responding locally and following your opponent all around the board. We're seeing it time and time again in this game. There are larger moves. Always have to stop and ask yourself, is trying to capture those two stones really the largest thing on the board right now? Always important to ask yourself, more so in a game like this. Alright, so Black tries to get a little bit of a corner for himself. Surprise, surprise. White immediately throws down an invasion. But even this is okay, because White's going to get in, or Black's going to influence, and there are weak groups in the center of the board. So any influence aiming there is going to help him. As we see here, White takes the next the last open corner. Alright, so now we're definitely in the middle game. There's no opening left. There's no corners to take. And there's two weak groups in the center. Because of those two weak groups in the middle, I still have very high hopes for black. Black approaches, which is immediately a good thing. You can see that any strength that this stone receives is going to be hurting every one of white stones in the middle. Not a bad approach. White immediately realizes, oh right, good point, you're going to be hurting my stones if I keep playing here. So he responds. And again, black just moves to settle. A very small move. Need to keep these stones disconnected. It is so important when you have two weak groups to keep them disconnected. Sorry, I worded that wrong. When your opponent has two weak groups, keep them disconnected. Minor important clarification there. So instead, black backs off, white gets to connect up for free. Now we have only one weak group in the middle. So the question is, how could that left, how could that weak group possibly uh, live? Because it's got no shape. The only way it can live 
if it manages to run to the left, right? Because it can't go down, since black has so many stones there. It can't really go up, because trying to connect to this stone seems a little bit impossible. It's going to have to, like, go up and then make some sort of turn, and probably not going to get those moves in. So the only way this group can survive is if it runs in this direction. Instead, Black pushes him in that direction, the exact direction that he wants to go, when he should be taking any kind of, maybe not that one, that's a bit too close, when he should be uh, making certain that he cannot run in that direction, that the only direction that this group can go is in the, group, in the directions that it cannot live in. And that was pretty much the last mistake for white, for black, sorry. He pushes him in the wrong direction, allows his invasion to live. Again, white still playing slow moves. We could continue trying to surround it, make it really, really hard for this to live. Instead, black is still following his opponent around the board, responding locally time and time again, and you can see the result of this. This group is going to get out. So just about everything that White tried to do, he got away with. And the reason for this is because he kept responding locally, he kept playing small, uh, small moves. So he was able to get away with everything. Just absolutely everything. And that's what you really want to be careful of. Especially at a Q level good chances you need to stop for a minute and really ask yourself what's larger. Now I have a few other uh, good examples of uh, this theme. A little bit stronger uh, opponents than uh, the 3Q and the 5Q that we see here. Um, let me see, click on over to my other screen real quick. Yeah, this next game is going to be between two 2Qs, so a little bit stronger than the 3 and 5Q game that we, uh, just went over. So I will close this, and I will open up that. Um, let's see here, where is it? File, upload, to the teaching ladder... Um, you. There we go. Alright, let me give a second for people to get joined. There we go. Alright, so this game, between two, two cues. Uh, some of you who watch my videos might recognize the name Inazuma. Unfortunately for her, her opponent did play a bit crazy in a bit more reasonable manner than the game that we just saw, but still fairly crazy. The opening, however, is thankfully normal. They're taking corners, for example, which is a, bit in, a big improvement. Have an approach, pretty standard. Bit of a tight pincer, okay. No problem there. Unfortunately, Black does mess up this Jaseki. A Jaseki here that uh, I usually teach to my students is the attachment, because it's very, very easy to settle, and it doesn't run all over the board, and usually when I'm teaching I like uh, focusing on simple things. And this Jaseki, I think, uh, is an example of, is a very nice example of that. Here we simply see black getting a base, not being surrounded. White's got a group that he has to look after, so this probably is going to be Sente for white, or for black, sorry, because white needs something else here to defend against those four stones. Otherwise, you know, they can fall under attack. So pretty nice, straightforward Jaseki. Doesn't really ruin the board. 
I, I like it very much. Instead, we see something a little bit unusual. Expected to see maybe White run out his stones. He decides, no, I'm not going to run out that stone. I don't want to get involved in that kind of fight. I'm just going to sacrifice it. All right, not unreasonable at all. Black should just move to uh, make certain it can't run out then. Make certain that he does not have that option of uh, doing so later. Instead, black gets too complicated here. This would be the nice simple answer. Just make certain that this not going anywhere. tries to be a little bit fancy here. I can see the thought process, hoping that maybe they're able to get more influence here. This would be pretty good for black. Instead, white says, no, I'm just going to cut you. And now we have a bit of a complicated game on our hands. Uh, I'm not that interested in this uh, result. What I'm interested in is what, how we handle the result of what we're going to see here. Essentially, white tries to make things complicated, justifiably so, fine in the corner, can still escape, all right. Moves to surround, black. Unfortunately, white does, however, get a little bit too aggressive here. Should back off because you can't really hane. If you hane, you're gonna get cut and you cannot take that stone. If you do something like this, for example, which is what happens in the game, there's no way to keep black in. Uh, if you backed off, same thing, no way to keep black in. So, really can't Hane. Much better off just extending, but oh well. Black thankfully gets out. Moves to kill white. White, however, has a co for life. Not a very good co for uh, for black, or for white, sorry. Having to co to live in the corner this early on in the game. Very, very good for black, most definitely. Definitely a threat, which is responded to. Attachment, which goes ignored because he wants to live. And now we're kind of going back into a bit of a more reasonable game. White gets to live in the middle, or in the center, sorry, or that wrong word, both times. White gets to live in the corner, while black gets influence. A little bit of a misread there, sure. But essentially, white now has a very, very important question to ask himself. How is he going to handle all of this influence that black has? Very, very important question to ask. Now, we could do it uh, small. We could, for example, <laughs> assuming we're not going to resign, we could do it simply, just start uh, splitting up black stones, get a few living bases here and there. However, white is a little bit desperate. Tries to save his cutting his uh, cutting stones immediately. This not needed, but oh well. Black moves to kill. Unfortunately, a little bit too aggressively gets to kill those stones, but white gets some stones as well. All right, not the end of the world. Black still has a bunch of influence and sente. Black uses it to reduce Aji, make certain that uh, that group's got a lot of liberties and those stones are never going anywhere. Okay, good idea, good idea. I like it. It's a nice and calm move. And here we have a nice, reasonable decision by White. I like this a lot. You've got a lot of influence in the center, recognizes that. Sure, I'm going to take it uh, nice and slow. First up, I don't want you getting a Sanrin set. I don't want you adding to this influence. That's a very good idea. That's not crazy at all. Black responds, we need a base now. But we've gone into crazy mode because we see that we're behind. 
So he's not going to calmly wait for a uh, way to get back in the game. He's going to try and do what the other guy did. He's going to channel his inner 3Q and start trying to do everything at once. So here he's going to try and make certain that uh, Black doesn't get another extension here. Okay. Black ignores that, puts more pressure on the stone, because that's the right decision. Makes certain this can't extend ever again. So then White decides to try to reduce the center. So now we've tried to make certain that White uh, apparently doesn't want Black to get the top, uh, didn't want Black to get the right, now doesn't want Black to get the middle, and really trying to do that all at once. A couple of ways to answer this. Black says, you know what? Eight fine territory, that really suits me just fine. It really, really does. I'm a little bit more aggressive. I might want to try and keep uh, white in. Because even if this lives somehow, let's, let's let this live. There, that lived. You're still developing a awful lot at the top. Okay, it's not alive yet. Um, there, now it's alive. But yeah, black's still developing a lot at the top, even if this actually connects anywhere. So what are you possibly going to do there? I mean, that's not going to live, that one stone. But, all right. Black says, eighth line territory, that's fine with me. I don't mind. I'm just going to keep the bottom, and I won't expand past this point. Hard to call that bad. Eighth line territory is uh, definitely respectable. But, of course, with the middle nicely reduced, that leaves the left-hand side being the largest point on the board. So we play there immediately. So immediately you can see White's overreaction here. Any type of calm mentality went right out the window. Wanted to reduce the top, slapped a stone down there. Wanted to limit the left hand, the right hand side, slapped a stone down there. The middle was getting large, okay, time to slap a stone down there as well. And now the left hand side, that was still open, so we're going to slap a stone down there as well. That even takes a lot of energy to say, let alone play against. But the question is, how do you possibly handle this? I mean, your opponent has gone crazy. And one thing that we don't want to do is two things. We don't want to play slow, and we don't want to follow our opponent around the board. Those are the two things that we really want to look for when uh, trying to handle this kind of play. Good rule of thumb in general, but especially here. Because you can see that if you play slow and you keep following your opponent, and if all of these stones actually manage to live, then they got exactly what they wanted, and you're probably going to lose the game. So, black kicks. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Defends in corner, alright. White strengthens himself. And black's turn to make a little bit of a mistake here wants to pressure the left-hand side. White seems to be uh, interested in it. So what black wants here is for white to keep responding to this. That way we can play something large and completely swallow the, corn, uh, the center. It's an understandable move. It might even be an all-right move. But I would have preferred even something as simple as following up something that White ignored. And right now we've got two things that White ignored. We've got the top, which we've approached twice. So I could definitely see following up maybe a cap here. That seems to be uh, nice. Just finishing what was uh, uh, left alone. I also see just making certain that that center stone isn't going to further reduce you in any way. And just following up here, too, because, again, 8th line territory is kind of large. 
I mean, you've got two potential corners right now, upper left and lower, upper left and lower, or in the upper right. Still have the middle. With this extra stone played here at L9, you would even keep the 8th line territory. Maybe even a bit of ninth line territory now. That's, that's good too. Instead, uh, white would have two ways to go. The thing with the cap, though, is we don't care if it lives. Because if this really does uh, want to, uh, you know, connect on up, that's just helping you. Because now that middle stone doesn't really have anywhere to go. Right? You can completely lock him out of going left. All the thing that he can do now is go right in order to live. So you're just enlarging your center enormously here. So it doesn't matter which direction he goes. I don't really care. It's like, go wherever you want. This one, unfortunately, is going to probably have... Uh, few more forcing moves involved, but again, same thing. This stone can't connect up to the right or to the right anymore. No hope of that ever. So we can just swallow it. So I like that idea. And if he ignores to do something else, you can play another move there and just make certain that the stone just flat out dies. So instead, white tries to revive his stones, black says, nope, they're dead. Not a bad idea. Uh, here we have a little bit of a misstep by black, but that's fine. Black tides to cut, dividing the center from whatever shenanigans that white's trying to do here on the, on the bottom of the board. Okay. So trying to make life probably strengthen your stones when uh, your opponent attaches to them, but not that much of a problem. This gets to live. That's unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. That's, yeah, it's clearly two eyes. So the question is, what can we do here now? Well, we do still have that influence. It's really, really unfortunate that uh, White got to live here so easily. That's something that should not have happened, but we still have weaknesses that we can attack. And as long as we have that, then we're in the game still. So Black follows up. Oops. So Black follows up. White jumps out. A uh, little bit of a misstep here as well. Because normally I would want to play this move here to make certain that there's no way for white to attach onto my stones so I recognize that the large knight has a lot of forcing moves. I mean, even locally we can see that immediately one eye can be made. And I'd want to make certain that that can't happen. So I'd want to play something like this. But on this board, I can't even say that G15 is bad, because there's still a huge top to take for yourself. Let's say white does actually lean on this group in some fashion. That's still giving an enormous area to black, so I can't really argue that either. Again, looking for that uh, coveted little eye. Connecting out with a small knight, which is a great way uh, to run when you want your group to get cut to pieces. That small knight is definitely not your friend if you have a weak group and you're trying to run away with it. Black says, okay, I'm going to strengthen myself and then I'm going to cut you. Not a bad idea. White, of course, is still in full-on crazy mode. He has two weak groups right next to each other that are trying to live in the same area. That's not good. He should be interested in one thing and one thing only. Trying to uh, insert, ensure sorry, that this other group lives. 
if that stone dies in the process, oh well. We need the larger one to survive. Instead, playing greedy. Lag, there we go. Black probes, okay, sure, why not? Strengthens uh, herself, preparing to kill one or the other. I like that a lot. Then, unfortunately, we have a little bit of a misstep here by, uh, by Black. Really simple move, just connect. Because we can see here that the odds of this living are incredibly small. We don't even... Maybe we can get one eye here, I guess. Potentially. In Gote. We can have one eye there in Gote. So White still needs a second one somewhere in Sente. Can't imagine how that's going to happen. Instead... Black gets a little bit fancy, allows herself to be cut, and those stones just get killed. Alright, a little bit unfortunate there. A little bit unfortunate. Uh, later on, though, we can recognize that this isn't quite alive yet. I mean, maybe later, if we can uh, get uh, da, 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 that move in at uh, F, 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 F15, which we could probably do now since we can't get cut, then we can keep this killed. Yeah, because this doesn't work. Yeah, we can play this now. We can play that now. So, uh, yeah, not quite alive yet. But that aside, we've now got the middle. Again, Black tries to play a little bit fancy, attaching to this strong group to try to get uh, influence to kill the top. I'd rather just eliminate the Aji, rather than for the exact same reason, allow White to do things like attach, and then begin making shape here. But, again, White in full-on greedy mode. Bit of a direction problem here by Black, but that's okay. Got a lot of influence. Maybe we can uh, do something about that middle, which he's going to try to live with immediately. Pokes shape, good. All we should do now is make certain that we're not disconnected. And White uh, will have a lot of problems on his hands. Instead of, of keeping a uh, nice... Uh, solid connections. Black does allow herself to get cut here, which is unfortunate, because now we have a life and death problem. As we can see here. Now, given the situation, Black does make a very good showing of uh, maximizing liberties for herself before going back and playing this. But unfortunately, it's just not to be had. Goes for a kind of a double co, but not really working out. This is just kind of dead. As we can see here. Thankfully, this still remains. Black realizes the left wasn't completely alive, so doesn't get away with everything like in the previous game. But we did make a few missteps. We allowed ourselves to get cut off and killed. We allowed uh, Black to live on the bottom. Still kind of followed our opponent around a little bit too much. Played a slow move here and there. Not quite as bad as the previous game, but still get to be on the lookout for those kinds of mistakes. We definitely don't want our opponent to do that, because if this group was alive uh, of Whites, and it could have lived earlier if, you know, White just paid an extra move, then this would be a catastrophe. As it stands, that's dead, so game's essentially over. So once again, we're seeing the uh, same theme 
how important it is to remain calm and not follow your opponent around the board when they're playing crazy stuff. I do have one last game that I wish to go over, I think. Yes, I do. This one is between... I forget. Oh, no, I remember. I think it's between a 1Q and a 1Don. So a little bit stronger game again, in which we see the uh, same principles. And how important it is to... Uh, not follow your opponent around the board and beware of those small moves. So I'm going to throw that up here real quick and I shall see you guys in a moment. Let's see... Upload to the teaching ladder... If I can find it where it is... Alright, uh, upload, where is it? Do, 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 do. There it is. I think, oh no, where was it? I think it's this one. Yep, there it is. One K and one Don. Or, yep, yeah, there we go. Alright. So here we have a one last example. A one Don and a one Q game. I always find these games to be a little bit fascinating because most of the Qs that I run into are shooting for that lovely uh, one Don status. Especially the one Qs, they really want to get rid of that K next to their name and throw in the D. So I find these a little bit amusing. Not, no, that's, that's, no, no, bad word, not amusing, not amusing. These people don't amuse me. Um, I just find it interesting, because I know that 1K is really, really wanting to beat the one down in these games. And by that same uh, idea, I know that the one down really doesn't want to lose the one, to lose to that 1Q. Because he wants to make certain that he still is a one down, and he's not slipping back into Qdom. So, I don't know. I, I find these games rather interesting. Probably is. It probably is. So, alright. Reasonable opening again. Black is going in style with the low Chinese that we are seeing everywhere nowadays. White approaches the 4-4. It's a little bit weird. It's just a little bit. Not crazy, it's just a little unusual. We usually see something, you know, over here, maybe a small or a large knight. But, whatever. That's a different lecture. White backs off for a framework. Black says, okay, I'm gonna build up. Black says, no, I don't want to get into opposing framework, so I'm just going to pincer you. And then... Huh. Two-space extension. It's not a crazy move. It has been played before. Um, a little bit unorthodox. I will go ahead and label it as an unorthodox move. But not crazy just yet. Question is how are we going to respond to this? We have a few ways. There's there's a there's a couple of ways that we can respond to this. We can respond to it by trying to uh, cut through. That might get into a little bit of a aggressive game. White says no, I'm not going to get into aggressive game. I'm going to play simply, take a one space extension for myself, take some territory. If Black's not careful, I'll cut through it later. No reason to do it now. I'm in no hurry. Okay, I like that a lot. And then black pokes. This is a bit of a thank you move. Up until now, that 3-3 three, three was vulnerable. The minute you poke, and your opponent will respond, either by connecting or, you know, a bit of a different fashion like we see here with uh, C3, is not going to be invadable anymore. So 
with one move, you just assured that you've just given fourth line territory away to, your, to uh, your opponent. Not a very good idea by Black. And you're not even, believe it or not, getting very much for this either. Because does this poke actually get rid of your weaknesses in your shape? It doesn't, does it? Not unless you play another move here somewhere. White's still going to be able to poke you right back. Make you heavy shape. Maybe even get out. Ah, to go away. Thank you. So you're not really accomplishing very much there. If you don't want to be cut through when you play this two-space extension, then don't play the two-space extension. If it's a possibility that you don't like and don't want to see and can't handle, then don't play that move. It's part of the move you chose. It's kind of weird. But won't harp on about that. Black uh, makes... I see what he's doing. He tried to make himself stronger so he can go back and pincer and really take a large area of the board. All right. All right, cool. But, unfortunately, Black, uh, no, sorry, White demonstrates that he's a little bit uncertain as to what Black is doing. Uh, not, not really certain how to handle what he's seeing. Uh, I can see that from his next move, that he thinks that Black's moves are a little bit on the crazy side. And unfortunately, he responds locally by and makes Black stronger. Not what we want to do. Because Black is overjoyed to see this move. He was trying to get stronger, and now he's offering up an exact way to get stronger. Can Hane? Oh, you're going to do that? Fine, I can Atari you. You're going to connect. Great. I get to fix my shape now. Uh, you've got the fourth line territory that you always had. I'm getting so much strength here on the left now. So White has kind of allowed himself to sort of be tricked. Like I mentioned previously, no reason to respond locally, or at least like that. There are still weaknesses here. White uh, is forcing Black to do something about him. We can even escape, put pressure on this group. That's fine, too. Probably wouldn't do any of those just yet, though. Uh, if it was me playing this game, I'd probably cap this and deal with the framework uh, from here. Because it's really, really easy to live here. can quickly pull out light shape. Now we can let Black worry about the stone at D9. There's a lot of Aji there. Black's shape is still horrible. So it's completely on him as to how he's going to remove that Aji. Nice, simple solution. Instead... Gabe sent to his opponent, and Black's going to continue trying to expand on that influence. Because he's got that one thing in mind. He wants to make the largest Moyo anyone has ever seen anywhere. Uh, what about a move around K4? Uh, for white, you mean? As opposed to this, that, a move around K4. Uh, you could do that. I'm a little bit more aggressive. I see that it's going to be really easy for Black to take solid points from this. Not so much for White. In fact, if you really want to get fun, you can invade this and probably it's going to be Sente. Right? And then take your enclosure. I think this variation kind of favors black rather than white right now. We need to go back and do something with that D9 stone. It's going to be all in how we use that. I don't want to get into that kind of game, so I would just reduce it immediately. Because it keeps coming back to that enclosure. I don't want black getting this enclosure when he's already got extensions. So, be like, alright, no. I'm just going to handle that immediately. But I see where you're coming from. That uh, could be a good idea. 
Oops, all right. Black is trying to expand very, very quickly, getting downright greedy with his expansion. I mean, he's really wants his opponent to keep responding to him and getting more and more influence. Now would be a great time to go back and play lightly. Instead, white attaches. Oh dear. Maybe this attachment could be okay if black hadn't already jumped his group out twice. But as it stands, white uh, could just find black playing very calmly here and take the top of the board because his other group there at uh, F6 here is already out. It's fine. This isn't in any danger of being surrounded just yet. So we can just take our territory. Instead, black gets a little bit fancy here. Got a bit of a fight on our hands, which doesn't go very well for white. We can see that he's completely surrounded. Difficult to make shape. Needs to escape, which means his two stones get captured. And we've got essentially game-winning conditions for black. This and this need to live. We've got a framework. We don't really have any weak groups on the board. White still own all the weak groups. He's got weak groups, he's got invasion points. I mean, there's just so much that black can do on this board, and white doesn't have anywhere near those options. But okay, moves into uh, try and attack. I'd rather an immediate response, because this isn't alive yet. No reason not to. Play something like this, get him to live, and then go back and surround. Not even to kill. Again, like, like I mentioned, and uh, like I do in some of my videos uh, on my YouTube channel, if you've been looking at my KGS series, a lot of those games I'm not moving to kill. I'm purposely letting them live because it doesn't matter. If this group lives in the, mi in the middle, who cares? The entire top is still being developed while this group struggles around. So there's absolutely no need to kill anything on this board. Everything can live, and black can still win this game. But alright, white jumps out. Go back to surround. White says, right, 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 need to live here, no problem, I can do that. Black tries to follow my, my, uh, my words of wisdom here. It's like, alright, you can go back and do that. And to be honest... Black finding moves like this tells me that he's probably going to be a Dawn level player if he isn't already. Because this is the right idea. There's no reason to freak out and try your hardest to kill this group. We wouldn't have wanted to, for example, um, here's an example of what not to do. We wouldn't have wanted to go back here and then try and uh, attack from below, potentially running our opponent up into our territory, because that could be bad. That's a little bit more aggressive than we need to be here. All we need to do is profit from that top. We do not need to try to kill. So that black recognize that, I like it. I like it a lot. It's a good idea. White, on the other hand, is going to go crazy. He's got a weak group that's not alive in the middle. So what is he going to do? What's the problem with this? Why is this bad? Anyone know? Very good, Mad Frogs. That is a very good uh, realization there. Makes me think you might be stronger than 21Q. But yes. It's got another weak group. Can it live locally? Is it possible for this group to live locally when it's already pincered? Probably not. 
So what could this possibly do? Only thing can really expect to do is run to the middle of the board, where we've already got a group that's not alive. Small, small piece of advice. When you've got two weak groups that aren't alive, fighting to live in the same area, something's going to die. Can pretty much rest assured that something's going to die. Unfortunately, Black not quite aware of that. He tries to prevent White from running to the middle. Instead, he should be jumping for joy if that wants to run to the middle. If, he, if this group wants to do something this crazy, that's awesome, because we're going to get a splitting attack. Something here is dead. White gets to decide what it's going to be. Instead, he says, no, I'm not going to let you run to the middle. Even attaches instead of uh, playing a bit better move of Q18. Why is it better? We're going to find out very, very shortly. Hane, which leaves Aji, he should just descend. Again, it's all about making certain that this can't live locally. It descends so much better. He want, Yes, he wants to flat out kill this immediately. That right there, if anyone actually knows uh, Black, might want to have a little bit of a word with him, this is what would be holding him back from getting one done. If anything is, it's this. If you can be a bit more patient, just, I'll just keep it unsettled. If it lives, who cares? Both of them are not going to be able to live. Just be patient. Instead, he's leaving Aji behind, so now Black's getting in a couple of forcing moves, and we see P18, why it was a bit of a mistake. Because if we keep responding to keep uh, black in, though, or to keep uh, white in, though, that was a bit of a mistake of move. Play this and you're fine. This is actually the final mistake. Leaves too much Aji behind. And we're going to see that in a second. Uh, this game would have been a lot different if you played this move, though. And we'll get to this later. Uh, for now, though, it looks like everything's going well. Because he gets that splitting attack that we're looking for. Unfortunately, there's... Uh, an unfortunate amount of Aji being ling lingering behind in that top group. But White's going to go back and try to live. Black surrounds, as you would expect. Just left too much Aji behind. It's, it's really unfortunate. Because now, what can we really do here? Not, not a lot, unfortunately. So, bit unfortunate, bit unfortunate. If this was a little bit different, like I mentioned, if uh, this stone had been... Uh, what stone was I referring to? Ooh, that stone. If this stone had been here, on Black's move, he could now just turn, and this would stay dead. White would probably resign, game over. But on this board, not able to do that. If he pushes forward, there's obviously an Atari there. And this continues to get a little bit complicated. The fight rages on. And at this point, we have to throw in, but we need to throw in above too to prevent that eye. So, it's just too much. <clears throat> So what we have to do now is go back to the center. This is alive, very unfortunate, but we can still probe this. Ask it how this group is going to live. Because this is never going to be an eye, right? We can poke that out. That's really important to note. So as long as we don't have an eye shape in the center, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. Steady invades a little bit, which is okay. It's not a bad move, because when we look at White's territory, he's got nothing on top. He's got nothing on the left. 
decent sized corner in the lower left. Okay, sure. And we don't know what the 4 4 is going to be yet. Black, on the other hand, huge middle. Or not huge middle. A huge upper left corner that kind of spans into the middle. And maybe a nice upper right hand corner. So, alright, sure. He's going to reduce. Unfortunately, he gets his Draseki a little bit weird. He could just live here, and that would be okay. This is usually a move that we see when we're good with either living or getting influence, and I don't think there's any reason for the influence right now, so... I don't know, kind of weird. Second makes the exchange, large corner, but Sente for white. So what white should really do now is just make certain that this is alive and be happy. Stud, white takes territory, which black immediately invades. He's following his opponent around the board instead of seeing if this is really alive or not. White curiously allows this to live in a most unusual manner. White should just honey here and allow black to live in the corner. Nice and simple. Then he could go back, make certain that his group's in, in the corner, in the, not the corner, in the center's alive. Pretty good result. Pretty good result. Instead, he pushes black out into the right-hand side that he was just trying to make the territory from. Kind of weird. Goes back and ensures that, you know, that T1 point not going to be available. Oops. Not go away. Not going to be available for him. So pushing him out further into the right-hand side. So now all of those are gone. Yeah, it looks like he is trying to kill, but that's completely unreasonable. I mean, even with a move like that, there's no way to kill. So he plays there. He keeps it separated. I think that might have been a, a misread. Maybe he thought that Black was trying to link under? Very, very odd. Instead, he kills himself. Uh, by playing down, Black could essentially just poke at this, and the game would be over for really odd reasons. Because he pushed Black out repeatedly, and then allowed himself to be surrounded. Kind of hard to live with this now. Again, we've got the splitting which is really, really nice. Even manages to throw in, but then he backs off at the last minute. He sees that he's a small knight there. He protected him. I would rather he protected him a different way. Because if, if he really wants to cut, he's got fine shape here. White's the one completely surrounded right now, not black. He can play super aggressive here, and he'd be completely fine. Instead, he backs off, which allows White to continue going off and doing other things, like trying to live. And Black does that same thing, too. Very defensive, very slow play. He could have aggressively gone after White's, uh... White's little eye that he's got uh, trying to create, uh, be created here. Said he just jumps out, and then even after he's jumping out, he's still focused completely on just trying to live. Instead of separating and maybe, I don't know, killing this group. But, oh well. Unfortunately, this, however, was really unfortunate. He connects that stone on up. I think... Does that work? I do believe that seems to. We went over this on Wednesday, didn't we? Yes. Forgot that fast. His co-threat was a reasonable one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can try and kill. Doesn't work. Um, can play here, it just connects. Or 
only thing that White can really do is Atari here and try and push his way to freedom, which has a really, really happy result of killing off the right... Oh, wait, no, they can't. Never mind. You can completely ignore that. I thought I completely forgot that those two stones have been played. Shoot, never mind that then. Yeah, never mind. I forgot those stones were dead. Anywho. Here's White's uh, last gambit. He needs to live here. If Black manages to kill him, game's over. Unfortunately, we see again Black responding to everything that he's doing, as opposed to realizing he's just very, very strong in this area. So we can poke with impunity. Yep, this is the game. This is the actual game. And at this point, there's really nothing that black that white can do. I mean, he's got to keep that separated, which leaves no chance for any kind of comeback. I mean, that group's kind of just dead, yeah? You're going to go to a co on that one? Probably not a code that you want to play right now, to be honest. I mean, you can ask yourself, where is Black going to get threats from? Uh, does have local threats, sure, does have local threats, but you have to keep in mind that um, he's not the only one with threats, because we've got, for example, uh, what can we do here? Uh, if we do that, take that there... Let's see, where does white black have actual threats from? Oh, maybe he can't threaten the left-hand side. Anyway, I was looking at uh, things for threats such as... Let's see, I don't know. Yeah, I was considering R15. I was also trying to figure out if this was ever going to be a threat. But I don't think it is. I think we can live there too easy, it looks like. But, has to play it. This is last chance. This game is getting entirely too close. But instead... White lives fairly simply. And essentially managed to get away with everything that he wanted to do. Despite the unreasonable two groups he created. Black was not really able to profit from them very much. There's a few slow moves on top of the board. Didn't recognize that white running out to the middle is exactly what he wants to do. He tried to kill him locally. He wasn't really thinking uh, globally in that. So he played a few small moves. Um, Black did play a little bit on, a little bit oddly there. That's true, but this was not unreasonable at all. The situation White found himself in was a lot more unreasonable for uh, White to invade than it is for Black. I can message you about that later. Though, since you did mention donations, I guess I should spam that again. The fact that there's, uh, let's see, two lectures left, I think. And that if anyone does wish to donate to further ones, you can do so at the link provided. If you want to donate to lectures or uh, just show your appreciation for the videos that I've been putting out on YouTube. Feel free to do so. Uh, I think this is the end of this particular game, though. There are a few different uh, figures I do want to go over, though. Uh, this is a bit of a different format than my normal uh, lectures. I took games from amateurs, 
which I usually take them from professionals. Uh, next week, though, is going to be following a similar theme, only instead of crazy moves, I want to go over shoulder hits, either in your games where they were used either successfully, unsuccessfully, whether they were used to attack, whether they were used to defend. Uh, I want those examples, and if you wish for me to use them, you can feel free to email them to my email at akari at zoominternet.net. Like I said, you can use them successfully, unsuccessfully, you can use them to attack, you can use them to reduce. Hopefully I'll have a nice uh, amount of examples where... Oh, no, no, no. Do not shoulder hit 10 again. Hopefully I'll have a nice set of examples to use for next lecture, which I will have a uh, week after next, as usual. So you've got a fair amount of time to play a game or two, see if uh, that comes up in any of them, and if so, shoot them to my email, and I'll be going over them in my next lecture. Does attach on top go into that shoulder hit category? Um, no, that's an attachment. That's not a shoulder hit. Right now I'm looking specifically for shoulder hits. A different lecture I might cover a well, hmm. I guess it really depends on the game. I can think of a few instances where it would fit what I'm looking for, but probably not. I'll leave it up to you to decide if you want to send it in or not, though. But if no one has any questions, then thank you very much for uh, watching this lecture again, those of you who've seen it twice now. Sorry again about having to give this over again, but the first time it recorded in horrible, horrible quality, I actually liked this lecture, so I wanted to make certain that it was there and actually, you know, able to be seen. No, it had nothing to do with the San Rense comment, which, yes, I forgot all about that one. I burned it from my memory. But alright, I will see you all next time. I hope you have a good weekend, and take care.